Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com and this is Social Justice 101. Now the idea behind this video is mainly to just explain the concept of social justice, at least the way it's supposed to be thought of, and the problems, but the reason why it's not something we should just throw away, but the reason why it should it's dangerous to think about it in terms of policy. Okay, so that the idea behind social justice is the idea that institutions, even even if on paper they are neutral, oftentimes are applied neutral to society. So, for example, let's say there's a rule that says um, if you do X during this game, you are penalized for doing X during this game. So that's a neutral rule. It doesn't distinguish people between like gender, race, whatnot. The rule is neutral. It's equal the rule in itself is equal to everyone. So you have theoretically equal justice, but at the end of the day, justice just doesn't magically happen. Actual individuals have to go and put it into action. They got to enforce it. So you could theoretically imagine a world where basically the people who t- typically are in power are people who may uh, have, uh, like, for example, let's say you had these two groups that don't like each other, or not necessarily even don't like each other. Let's say they just, you know, have a difference of opinion they have something that divides them and whatnot so now you have a game uh this game being played and this rule being enforced but the person who's a referee is someone who associates with one of these two groups more they might be they might enforce the rule a little bit more on the group that they don't identify with and maybe a little bit less on the group they don't identify with and it may only have a slight effect Okay, it might be not necessarily, it may not change the world, it may not change outcomes horrendously, but over time, if a lot of people apply rules this way, it could have profound effects on society as a whole, as far as who becomes, who gets power, who gets wealth, how resources are distributed. This is sort of where social justice is coming from. It's not so much that the rules explicitly say, hey, different people are going to be treated differently. To the extent that that's the case, then I think everyone... You know, whether you're, you consider yourself a social justice warrior or not, would agree to do that. And again, if you hear sirens, it's because I live in Brooklyn, and there's always sirens everywhere. But the idea behind social justice is that even when you have rules that are supposed to be applied equally to every, everybody, that, that that doesn't always happen. Okay, so um, justice, the actual application of justice isn't always equal. And the question is, how can you make it more equal? And different people have different points of view on that. So people who generally are consider themselves social justice warriors or big proponents of social justice believe that you need to take a proactive approach in the sense that you're not going to be able to necessarily to... If you want to make sure that everyone gets the same amount of justice, you can't have rules that are equal. Because even though the rules are the same for everybody, they're not applied the same for everybody. So in that case, to compensate for it, you need to have unequal rules. So that way, when they're enforced inequally, it, it balances out. That's kind of the the logic between social justice. So a rule may explicitly favor one versus the other, but the idea is that that person may already be at a disadvantage. So really what you're doing is you're equalizing the justice. Um, the problem with that is so many... St- the fact the, the any vector that might put someone at a disadvantage or at a privilege is constantly changing so for example long long time ago women weren't able to vote women weren't able to really be in the workforce all that stuff so the disadvantage of being a woman and the dis- and the privilege of being a man uh was very separate so theoretically, if you were applying social justice lo- logic to the law you you would have to create a, a fairly big uh advantage to women in the rules theoretically problem is over time that the extent to the disadvantage or the of being a woman versus the privilege of being a man have, has dissipated quite a, quite a bunch by different vectors now people will argue that you know they're um they're to some extent they're still disadvantaged to being x and privileged to being y but it isn't static it, it is constantly changing so when you when you sit there and say hey we're gonna make policies that try to equal out these things, policies don't change as these things change. So oftentimes you might create a policy that, let's say, tries to correct for these things and 
it ends up being in there a lot longer than it actually needs to correct it and it creates a new imbalance. Or it's it's not equally applied. So then what happens is that people who maybe weren't at a disadvantage get a benefit and the people who did need the benefit don't get it applied because even even the application of unequal rules will still be unequal. So what happens is it just becomes chasing itself and at the same time you're kind of fermenting this perception of of inequality you know, through your through uh, the rule the the formal rules okay so basically that's sort of the kind of what ends up being the problem so if ever, I think it's reasonable to imagine that hey you know what you may have a rule that's equal for everybody but it might get enforced unequally I mean this is where a lot of people believe in criminal justice reform and sentencing reform because they understand that oftentimes there are probably and it's oftentimes more of a class issue than anything because people who are wealthier have more resources they get lawyers um, they're going to generally have better reputations Dif- different things are going to result in less enforcement of rules and people who are poor are not going to have money for the same the, the, the same quality of lawyers the same ability to fight within the justice system so this so basically these kind of rules of like minimum sentencing um a lot of that will fall a lot harsher uh, on someone who's poor so to the extent that certain groups are disproportionately in a lower class versus a higher class for a variety of different reasons particularly historical and and laws and racism and and thisism and thatism you know whatever that that shifted sort of economic outcomes over time um it ends up falling on those vectors but at the end of the day you know generally if you have access to better lawyers, the justice system is going to be more kind to you than if you have access to worse lawyers. And that's a problem. That is a problem. And I think everyone can agree that, that a justice system uh, that works that way is bad. And we want to do that. But is the answer necessarily creating rules that are unequal, that also shape our perceptions? Because our formal rules will shape the way how people grow up and how people see the world ahead of them. So always, like, my personal fear is always the idea if... If you sit there and say, "Hey, we need to give a boost to these people," um, being a Latino, I'm a, I'm I'm a Guatemalan of Puerto Rican descent, and I know I always had a problem with this, where basically, uh, where you know certain things, there are certain aspects where me being Latino or worked to my benefit in a sense because of social justice, but it always left me with this weird feeling, like, "Wait, I couldn't have done this myself." Uh, do I really this, this sort of insecurity that? Uh, when this abil- inability to ever know, could have I done this on my own? Could have I, could have I, and that does, I think, has a psychological effect that I don't think necessarily is ignored, shouldn't be ignored, or should matter to an extent. It's a consideration in the larger discussion here. Um, as a libertarian, so again, I'm generally not for, for ch- making formal rules unequal. Um, if anything, there should be less rules, and they should be very simple and very uniform. Okay, basically, property rights, exchange, whatnot. But to the extent that institutions may want to be involved in social justice and try to correct for these things, I don't necessarily see that as a, uh, a thing that they can't participate in. If you run a private university and you want to factor in, you know, historical disparities into how you choose who is part of your student body because that's what you want to do you're free to do that and that's not necessarily a bad thing and you know it might be to a benefit to society in the long run i mean i don't know if there's really much uh i don't know i'm not familiar with the body of work that's actually measured to the extent that that might be the case or if if there's a way to measure it because again sometimes all you can do is theoretically think of something not everything is always measurable but again, there's the idea of social justice again. So there's a legit concern of equal rules being enforced unequally in society, creating dis- in- imbalances of justice for people versus, OK, hey, we're going to create unequal rules or try to create equal justice. The question is, those un- unequal rules will continue to be enforced unequally, creating a much more difficult and much more complex injustice. And that's generally my issue with sort of the formal rule aspect of it. But to the extent that private actors, individual actors, want to make make take those situations, those considerations into how they make decisions, that's fine. That's your prerogative. Okay, if you want to choose 
how you do things, how you dole out your resources, your personal resources that you've earned, whether you do want to do it based on pure, you know, measurable merit or do it based on uh, other factors. And you're free to do that. That's there's nothing wrong with that. And that's why I don't think like the social justice discussion should be just thrown out entirely. But when you start thinking about, hey, we should design policy this way, I think that's a very dangerous idea. Because then what it does, it also creates an incentive for everyone to sit there and figure out, how can I convince people that there's been an injustice towards me, so that way I can shape those rules to balance in my favor. And then it becomes a competition for for victimhood, um, because if I can prove that I'm at X disadvantage, I can then argue for X advantage in the formal rules. Um, and this creates sort of a race... To, a race to the victimhood bottom, in a sense, uh, or race, a race to oppression. Everybody wants to be oppressed in that case because everybody wants to be corrected. So this is why I think there's a value in equality in the formal rules, even if those rules will never be perfectly enforced. And maybe in the future you might have technology where you can enforce things more equally. Nothing's ever going to be perfect. The question is sort of what the incentives that these create so that way you have less distortions in the long run as possible. Um... So instead of proactively trying to reverse the distortions of the past, creating a neutral ground will allow those distortions to dissipate over time and over generations. But of course, you know, if you're someone who, you know, is one of those earlier generations that's got to be there while the imbalances are correcting yourself, you're going to be very upset that, hey, you're not going to be around when the things fully balance out. And that's why I can understand why people would want to be in a rush and whatnot. You know, there's a psychological, there's a, there's a time frame aspect of it. But from the outside looking in, the best thing you can have is let generations just figure it out over a couple let – a, let a couple of generations go to figure it out naturally so that way you still have the neutral rules and you don't have this necessarily, this conflict, this, this debate over um, you know, who is most disadvantaged to sit there and argue for advan- um, you know, imbalances in the rules. So it took a really long time to say something very simple, so I'm going to leave it at that. But my name is Alex Merced from alexmerced.com. Have a great day. Enjoy. Have a great day. Well, I already said that, so check out alexmerced.com. i got plenty of other videos. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Check out donate.alexmerced.com if you do.